Hello, everyone, and welcome to Think Like a Dog podcast, hosted by Andrea Paiva and Millie Travis. In this podcast, we discuss how to build the best relationship with your dog. From rescues to reactivity, we'll cover it all. Welcome to Think Like a Dog podcast. This is our first episode, and I'm so excited to start this with Millie um, because I know that there are so many dog owners out there that have faced the same problems that I have. And there isn't a lot of just open information out there that people sharing their stories and helping people find their direction in this dog training world and being a dog owner. So we're really happy to start this together because you're going to get two different perspectives. You're going to get the perspective of a professional dog trainer that does this all day, every day. And you're going to get my perspective of just a dog owner, you know, that's trying their best. So we're, we're going to start off this episode today just talking about how we met and how we just started our relationship um, and like we were talking about just a little bit ago, it feels like forever ago. It feels like <laughs> years. Yeah. It feels like years, but it was a few months ago that I, I can't like, I can barely remember our first session. But yeah. It feels like it's been forever. And it was just in June of 2022 yeah. this year. Yeah. So um, it, we've months. just achieved so many different things happened and Thinking about how we've we've met, it was because of one very special dog, Bubbles. Bubby. <laughs> He's brought us together, and I'm so thankful for him. He really taught me so much. He opened up a whole new world for me. And um, it all started when Ozzy and I, we went to Lifeline Animal Shelter. We went there just to meet the staff, to see the shelter, and to start off our partnership. Uh, so we were not looking to adopt another dog. Right before we got Bubbles, we adopted Max. So we already had Poochie, Kane, and Max. And for me, that was already like different because I only had small dogs my whole life. I've never really personally have had big dogs. And Ozzy was the same way. He only, he never really had his own personal dogs. That was his responsibility. So you start with seven. And then we start with seven. Uh-huh. That makes sense. <laughs> so we just, that makes sense. Just you know. dive right in. Start with seven and make two of them pit bulls, three of them now pit bulls. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. It's all good. And a high, too. high, high energy doodle. Yeah. Yeah. Very. It's fine. It's great. Just easy dogs. No, <laughs> no problem. <laughs> it's crazy why you needed any help. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we went to Lifeline that day and we're just, you know, looking to meet the dogs, go through the kennels. Um, we're, we got to the, you know, kind of end of our tour and I asked Ozzy, I'm like, do you want to pull any dogs out? Let's play with some dogs. Dangerous. Yep. Let's just play with some dogs. (laughs) And they're like, yeah, totally. Which dog do you want? Um, and Ozzy was like, oh, I know bubbles. Let's, let's bring bubbles out. As soon as bubbles comes out into the play yard, Ozzy's like, we're taking him home. Oh no. I'm like, oh. (laughs) Way to put me on the spot. That that's great. Um, yeah, what are all right. Do say no. Yeah. <laughs> In front of you know a whole right. shelter staff that's here trying to adopt these dogs out. Right. Yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> but we just we we brought Bubbles home that same day, and I never had the opportunity or even didn't know like what it was like to introduce dogs, because before Kane and Max, it was like easy. It was you know it just happened and. With Bubbles, we had to bring him home and I'm, I was a little bit nervous, but I had no idea mm-hmm. of like proper introduction of what what could happen. And lucky for us, like in the first few weeks, it was perfect. Mm-hmm. They were like a match made in heaven. They were so good together. And I was telling my mom, I'm like, we're so lucky. They're so good. <laughs> this is awesome. They play all Too day. Good to be true. Uh, they have fun. It's so, you know, it's great. But, um, after those few weeks, it was a day that I was walking out of the house and, you know, I was used to the routine, getting used to the dogs, all was good. And I had food in my hand. I was walking across the yard with bowls of food and, uh, they're just like, video. yeah, they're just like, right. Just coming up to me. Max comes, bubbles comes, Kane comes, and they're just surrounding me as I'm walking. I didn't think anything of it. Um, so I just kept walking and then out of what it, what it felt like it was out of nowhere, Bubbles and Max just started fighting. Mm-hmm. They w- went for it. 
And I've never dealt with anything like this in my life. I've never seen two dogs fight that way. And I was freaking out. All I could do is scream and run around, you know, trying to figure out what to do. Yeah. Um, and I, luckily I had like a horn in in close, like close by. So I ran inside and I got this horn and I just used it and they stopped, you know, they, they stopped, they split up and I put them in their crate. And, um, after that, I was just like, what just happened? Well, it's like that adrenaline rush too. Yeah, That's like the thing whenever, cause obviously, you know, I've been around a few dog fights doing what I do and it's. Like you feel like you're going to pass out after because yeah. it's just this rush of adrenaline. Absolutely. Yeah. And I've never been through that, yeah. you know, it's and terrifying. I'm just, it changed everything for me because now I'm thinking, what's wrong with Bubbles? Mm-hmm. Uh, what's wrong with Max? Can I keep these dogs? What am Especially I going to do? Especially when it's something that they had been fine. Mm-hmm. And then as an owner, you don't realize what the trigger was. Yeah. So then you don't know how to move forward because you think it's just, it could happen at any time, no matter what, you don't know what to avoid, exactly. what you did, what they did, why? So then how do you move forward? Exactly. And I didn't know anything. I was just, it was terrible because they didn't get <clears throat> really hurt. Um, it, it looked terrible at first cause they were bloody. Mm-hmm. It was very scary, mm-hmm. but at the end of it, they had a few scratches and everything was fine. But how do I move forward from that? That right. was like the big question. What do I do? And that's when we just started Ozzy Albies Foundation. So in my head, I'm thinking I'm going to rescue all these dogs. Mm-hmm. It's going to be all rainbows and butterflies. Mm-hmm. It's going to be great. Yep. And now I just experienced this like traumatizing, of course, you yeah. know, situation. And I'm thinking, how do I move forward? Yeah. Um, and my mom was like, okay, you have to get a dog trainer. This is it. Like you cannot keep all these big dogs and you have no idea what to do. Yeah. So I started looking into dog training and I had no idea there were so many different kinds of dog training in my head. It's like dog training. Mm -hmm. You're going to get a trainer. They're going to do their magic. Mm -hmm. All is going to be great. So I was going through these websites. I was Googling best dog trainer, you know, near me and looking through all these different websites and they were promising, two weeks obedient training, your dog's going to be perfect, 10 sessions, buy this package, they're going to be amazing. And, um, and I was just going through my options. And I actually ended up talking to one of the trainers from a facility. And um, as we were talking, we're having like a great conversation, I'm explaining to them what happened. You know, it's going great. And I've never been against like using tools to communicate with my dogs. So I've always like learned how to use like a prong collar or e collar, or I've I was always okay with that as long as you know how to use it. And I never yeah. I know that there's ways that you have to put it on so not to harm your dog. Mm-hmm. So I was always okay with that. I even had an e collar um, at the house. So at the end of the conversation, I was like, "Yep, all right, I'm gonna sign up." Um, but wait, I only have one e collar is that okay? And he's like, no, we don't do that. We don't use e-collars. We only do positive reinforcement training. And in my head, I'm like, wait, I have a dog that has reactivity to food, a mm-hmm. big dog at that. Mm-hmm. That's very strong. Uh, and they're both reactive to food. And I don't want to bring food into the mix and give them positive reinforcement while I'm trying to take that reactivity away, yeah. you yeah. know? So uh, my mom found mirror image. I didn't know your mom found us. She did. Yeah. She's like, look at this website. They look great. And I'm like, but I'm looking through your website and it's different because you're not offering like obedience, Mm -hmm. uh, like perfect. Here's, here's 10 sessions. Your dog's going to be amazing. Yeah. We just started offering obedience, but not even as like a way to solve behavioral problems. We only offer that to dogs who already have a good foundation. And then it's like an add on and like an additional thing you can do with your dog. Yeah once you've already got the basics down of how to live with your dog. Yeah. And that's what I thought it was really interesting because you guys offer, you're like, okay, we have to do an evaluation first. And then you go into this, um, you know, whichever route we think it's best for your dog. So that was way different than what was out Mm -hmm. there. Um, so when I talked to you, we had a great conversation and, um, I think shortly after that, that was when you were doing your grand opening of your facility. Mm-hmm. So shortly a lot after of stuff that, happening yes. at once for me, yeah. <laughs> and then we ended up meeting, you came to the house, um, and you came over, 
And I remember we brought out bubbles, you know, and that uh, at that time, I think it was like a week or two weeks after like the incident happened with Max mm -hmm. and Bubbles. And um, that was when you came and you met us for the first time. We, I mean, Ozzy and I, we were both there, but we had no idea what to expect. Mm -hmm. And I remember we were going through our session and it was going great and we're like learning so much. And you're like, All right, bring on Max. And I'm like, what? That was the first time. I couldn't imagine having them in the same room because I'm thinking, okay, my dogs just fought. I don't want to ever see that again. So I have to keep them as far away yeah. from each other as possible. Yeah. So that's why I think it's so cool. Like the different trainings and how much it has changed our world because we went from bubbles, from that situation with bubbles. And I was so scared and Ozzy didn't have any idea of how to move forward. And like where we are today, where we've even added dogs on mm -hmm. to our pack, you mm -hmm. know, and we're doing more with a foundation. How many dogs do you think you're going to get in 2022? Oh my God. <laughs> I can't. I think we're done for this okay. year. Sorry. I think. Uh, could never be so sure with our family. But, you know, I as I see our rescue growing, yeah. I'm just thankful we've learned so much because yeah. we would never be able to run a rescue or even think about it if we didn't learn the the foundation yeah. that you gave us. You yeah. Know? I mean, I think it's a lot of, you know, I get a lot of owners that it's not that there's no information out there. It's that there's so much information out there and there are so many different types of trainers that I get a lot of owners that have were either worked with a few different trainers or they've researched so much that they're now confused, overwhelmed, they're confusing their yeah. dog. So, uh, you know, the type of training that we do isn't, I think what people think of when they think of dog training, you yeah. know, I, I, I believe that no matter uh, in every moment you're spending with your dog, just like in every moment you're spending with another human, your partner, your friends, your boss, your coworkers, you're teaching them how to be around yeah, you, right? Exactly. Um, you know, I, I think that is what we do as dog trainers or as relationship-based, psychology-based dog trainers. We focus on every interaction that we have with our dogs because that's where they're learning from us. Yeah. They're learning about us, about what the expectations are, not only the expectations that we have of them, but what can they expect from us? Yes. And that's where I think that it's very different. Um, we focus a lot on what can the dog expect from you, not what, how can we change the dog to meet our expectations? I don't, the dog shouldn't have to change if I'm not going to change. Right. If I'm not going to offer different information. Right. Yeah. But that's the biggest problem I think in the way that we do things and probably why other trainers are very, um, or the other type of training that you mentioned of two weeks and, uh, you get a perfect dog obviously that is very like appetizing yeah. as a client, right? As a dog owner, you're like, great. I have to do nothing. You're going to come out. You're going to train my dog. Right. Yes. And you, and, and, and it's going to be the smooth experience, not only for me, for my dog, but for everybody involved, yes. I'll pay you whatever fine, but I have to do nothing. I have to change nothing. Yes. Right. That's not what we do. No. <laughs> and our first session I forgot to mention that it wasn't about training bubbles. It was training us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she was like, all oh, right, you're yeah. going to do this. She was telling Ozzy how to walk, how we need to do, how we need to pick up Ozzie the leash. Ozzy was so excited, though. <laughs> yeah. He was so excited. As I was, like, trying to talk to you, Ozzy was like, look, he's staying on place. Yes. <laughs> yes. Like, he okay, was... guys, if you think that's good. <laughs> exactly. Just, he was just like, he's staying. Look, it was, it was, it was a whole yeah. it was a whole thing. But we were getting trained more than bubbles. Mm -hmm. You were telling us what we needed to change, what yep. how we needed. And that was different. Yeah. Because like you said, you have to change in order for your dog mm -hmm. to change. And training good, tra you know, the training that really goes in depth and changes the core of the problem is changing you first. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, I mean, that's probably what uh, an average first session looks like for me for, um, any sort of reactivity, whether it's human dog, I've gotten a lot of dog and human reactivity within the last couple months just came from a session where, you know, I get the question a lot is, do you think my dog can do this? Because I just mm -hmm. came from a session where it was the option of, you know, she was a, a senior woman and she had a, a small dog, but he had bitten a couple times her and her neighbors. Mm -hmm. And she was thinking about rehoming him. 
And it was one of those things where she asked me, do you think he's capable of being the dog that I want him to be? And I said, it's not him. It's not, I, of course, I think he's capable, but it's what are you willing to do? Yeah. Are you willing to not have him on your lap? Are you willing to not have him, which, you know, more episodes that we'll have, we'll talk about why all of these things are important and um, what all goes into that. But it's it's not about what the dog is capable. Every dog is capable of of living and coexisting in our homes to a degree safely. Right. I mean, it's, it's about what are we willing to sacrifice or change or put in what amount of work are we willing to do to get that? So, I I mean, we don't do board and trains. We don't do um, time. And the only service that we offer that has the owner not present is day camp because we fully, it doesn't matter if the dog is good for us. Matters dog is, is good for you. Right. I did a session yesterday where I didn't touch the leash at all. Yeah. It doesn't matter if I can handle the dog. It matters if you can. Yeah. Dog doesn't live with me. Exactly. Yeah. And that's a lot of a lot of misconception that people have is thinking, I want my dog to change because we mm-hmm. go into dog ownership with so many expectations mm-hmm. on the dog. It's like going in a relationship and having all of the expectations of your partner. They have to dress a certain way. They have to act a certain way. And when they're out of that vision, you start to get turned off. You think, you know, they're the problem, but the problem is you with the expectations. Mm -hmm. Expectations are always to an extent you have to know how to step back, Mm -hmm. see the picture for what it really is and enjoy the ride. So I heard, I can't remember where I heard this, but you just reminded me, somebody said, expectation setting expectations for another human and in this case a dog is like setting goals for another human which is crazy right yeah I can't set goals for you to reach yeah. I can set goals for me mm-hmm. but I can't have expectations or goals for you to meet exactly I can have boundaries for me of these these are things that I won't allow in my life or this is a way I won't allow myself to be treated but I can't set a goal for another living being That's yeah crazy, right? If you look at it like that as expectations or goals, but I mean, that's, you're exactly right in the way of we bring a dog into our homes. I just literally just came from a session where I said this of we invite another species into our home and then we put the expectations on them to make us happy when a lot of times we won't even take time to learn their language. Yes. And that's why we named this podcast Think Like a Dog. Exactly. I tell people all the time, I, I, it's so much easier to teach the human, if the human is willing, <laughs> to think like a dog than it is to teach a dog to think like a human. Right. That's crazy. That's why we don't do trick treat training. I mean, we do, but it's fun. It's yeah. something fun to do with our dog, not to solve a behavioral issue. Exactly. That's And that's something that you even wrote in one of your posts, you know, you you don't want someone else to treat you like a fish, Mm -hmm. right? You don't want them to expect you to act like a fish, be like a fish. And then you're going to get confused about who you really are. Yeah. And that's someone, that someone is your partner, a family member. Mm -hmm. You want them to accept, just accept you for who you are. Absolutely. And be able to work with you through your flaws, but don't expect you to be a certain way or Mm -hmm. be different, be somebody else. Mm -hmm. And dog ownership is about accepting who your dog is for Mm -hmm. who they are. When you go into dog ownership with so many expectations, you want a hiking partner. You want to take them to the bar. You want them to be next to you at the dog park. You want to use them as a ticket to the social world. And then you see that maybe that dog doesn't really feel Mm -hmm. comfortable around other dogs. They don't really like to be around so many people. They get overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. Are you just going to say, nope, this dog is not for me. Let me find another one. And that's the problem that we're, you know, even us running the rescue, we have so many people reach out to us. I want to rehome my dog because they have reactivity issues because they don't get along with our resident dog. Mm -hmm. Um, because, you know, they don't like my mom. They don't like my dad. But what have you done yeah. to change that? Or, uh, and I don't think I've ever even told you this, but, you know, the boys got, Max and, and Bubbles got in a fight before we met, right? Right. And then we did that one session. They got in another fight. Yes. They did? Uh, they did. They did. Yeah. Max and Bubbles. Yeah, it happened and then again. Mo- more recently, Bubbles and Kane. Yes. Right? 
So each one of those times, if you, you know, my expectation, at least uh, from what I've been taught from other humans, working with other humans is I'm waiting on a text for you to say, I can't, I can't keep bubbles. Yeah. Right. Because that's, I mean, I truly, that second fight, I was like, oh my God, they're going to, they're going to say they're going to give bubbles back. Yeah. And then of course, as a trainer who loves what I do, uh, you know, it's something that I tell my assistant trainers all the time and my team, but it's something that I have trouble with myself is I can't be more committed than the client because I'll get burnt. You know, you have emotional yes. burnout and things like that. But it's one of those things where I take it on as I did something wrong, right? Yeah. Why didn't I offer them the, a certain tool or something like that? But to have owners who are saying, okay, yes, they got in this initial fight. Yes, they got in the second fight. Now there's now he got in a fight with another dog. And it's not that he needs to be rehomed or this isn't the right place for him. It's that we still have more to learn. Yes. That is so refreshing to me as a trainer to have people who say I have a very powerful breed with an unknown history who has fought two of my current dogs that I had before I got him and I'm not giving up on him yet. Yeah. I'm not ever going to give up on him because I made a commitment to this dog and I need to figure out what it is that I need to provide him in order to get what I, uh, some sort of uh, homeostasis in my home with him. And it it wasn't always like that for us because this is why I think having someone that you can trust to give you good advice in terms of being a dog owner is so important because for us, it's always extremely confusing for you as a dog owner to go through this experience and you have no information Mm -hmm. in front of you. You just have people that are concerned for your safety. Oh, your dog's fought. What if they go for you next? What if they bite Mm -hmm. you? You know, now you're, you're Mm -hmm. confused. You don't know which way to turn in terms of what to do next. And a lot of the, you know, a, a big reason why we have learned we have to change. We have more to learn is because now we have your, you know, your, uh, the ability to call you and for you to give us these directions, like this is what you need to do. And once we have, um, we opened our minds to this, we have learned that all of these fights that happened, there was a reason behind it. There was like a specific trigger Mm -hmm. that happened that uh, it was our fault. Yeah, and I it think was it would me. be good to do like an episode on like breaking down each fight yeah. and maybe posting because you have the videos of the first and the second I one. I do. Yeah, and posting those and sort of breaking Because you can those specifically yeah. see exactly what happened and and it was just me just saying, oh, it's fine. We you don't know. know. Yeah. I mean, I, I talk, that's another thing is that people come to me with a lot of shame because either they do know on some level or on many levels. The session I had yesterday of the, you know, the owner started crying of, you know, my German shepherd, I've kept him in the house for five years. He's had nine years of practicing human and dog reactivity. I know it's me, but I don't know what to do about it. Yeah. Why would you know? Yeah. I, I'm not, I can't go into your job and do it like and do it half as well as you would. Right. This is my job. Of exactly. course, you can't know better until you do better or until you can't do better until you know better. Like, why would you know? So it exactly. makes sense why it happened. It makes sense why you know, you're walking like everything is fine. And sometimes that energy is all you need to sort of get away with it. Probably yeah. the reason why the first two weeks they were totally fine is because we didn't know anything better. So our energy didn't come into play of I'm nervous, right? We're dealing yeah. with that a lot right yeah. now. We've talked about that a lot right now of putting the boys back together and checking our energy and doing things to help us, you know, make sure that we're calm and confident with them and, and can provide information to them. But why would you have known that carrying two food bowls was going to start a fight? Exactly. You've done it. You did it before. Yeah. Why would it be a fight this time? Exactly. And it's just once you're able to step back and look at the bigger picture and look at yourself and understand that energy is so big into this because you're always saying, you know, you have to check your dog's energy, but you always say you have to check your energy Mm -hmm. when you are walking your dog when you are around your dog, you have to be confident. You mm-hmm. have to be a leader. And that's a lot of, that's something that when I tell people my dogs have changed my life is because they have taught mm-hmm. me to be so much more confident. They have taught me that confidence is key to everything, mm-hmm. to relationships, to life. They have taught me to be a better leader. They have taught me to step back and look at the big, bigger picture. 
They have taught me that, you know, I have to look at myself first before looking at somebody else or looking at this problem that's going on. How can I change? Um, And the first session that we had together, I remember you sent me a breakdown of our session and you sent me a book of just all these different recommendations, how to stir us in the right direction. And that just changes the world for so many dog owners because once we have dog owners, we expect them, like we were talking about expectations. Mm -hmm. We expect so much from them. We expect them to be these big babies that we cuddle with them in the couch. They get in our bed. They do whatever they want in this big house that they're not used to, you know, Mm -hmm. like they come into this new world. They're like, okay, I have all this room. I can do whatever I want. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that after you really gave us direction, you sent us, you know, these recommendations and you said, first thing, take away the couch, take away the bed, Yep. take away, take back your space from your dog. Yeah. And from a, from a dog owner's perspective, you're thinking, how can I, I want my dog to be all over me because I expect them to fix my whole life. That's I my expect biggest them. battle yeah. as a dog trainer because it's a sacrifice that it, it's, I'm asking you to give a boundary to your dog that you don't want to give Yeah, <laughs> that you do, That is also a boundary for you. Yeah. That's hard. And That's in our hard. household is, is two different, you know, it's two different worlds because in my world, I try my best to follow the direction that you're giving us yep. while as Ozzy. Yep. <laughs> goes completely against it like he loves to see the dogs behave and walk nice and the leash and and place and stay but yet he wants them to be on the bed he wants them to be all over him back to that energy thing I think it was our second session after they had fought the second time yeah I remember standing in the backyard with you and Ozzy took the boys down and I remember seeing (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> bubbles tail goes straight up and I go hey watch bubbles and he goes oh they're fine yeah and it was fine because Ozzy was so he believes so so uh, wholeheartedly yes. that everything will be fine right yeah. that everything kind of always turns out <laughs> yeah, fine that's for him true. right that because true, that yeah. energy like that you know it's it, he influences or that that uh, amount of you know, it'll work out it influences the dogs, right? But when working with you, who is very aware of the risks of these two dogs fighting again, or, you know, two of these dogs fighting again and not wanting to be in that situation by yourself and all of these very realistic worries, right? That plays into the energy that you bring into the pack, right? So then it's one of those things where you have to, as a dog trainer, I've got (laughs) to... I have to learn how to reel people like Ozzy back in yeah. of like, yes, I'm glad you think it'll be fine, but let's learn a little bit about the, like the dog body language where every, yeah, you know, I know that you want them jumping on you, but let's, let's maybe think about how that can play into when Andrea is walking down with two, two food yes. bowls since you're feeding them at the table, Ozzy, I'm calling you out, <laughs> um, or feeding them from your mouth. Right. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh uh-huh. yeah. Um, but like when I, when I work with you, it's, I have to convince you that everything is fine with Mm -hmm. him. I have to convince him that everything might not be okay. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Two different It's the opposite. Yeah. Yeah. But both of those energies play into how the dogs respond. Yes. And it's so much of having expect, like what we all, what we're talking so much about today is expecting things from your dog. Like Mm -hmm. he expects things to be fine. Mm -hmm. And I have, you know, I have this slight expectation of things that are not going to be fine because mm-hmm. I was there when all of these problems mm-hmm. came and I was right front and center yep. seeing and figuring out how am I going to stop it. And like we talked about, it happened more than once. Mm-hmm. There was three different scenarios with bubbles that they got into fights. And each time we do know now what was the trigger but I was there seeing it. So that kind of, that causes me a lot of, you know, I want to be extra careful. And of a lot course. of times I'm, my problem is a lot of times that I'm tense around the dogs. Yes. It's not that I, I, I never teach people to not be careful. Yeah. <laughs> it's relax. Right. Yes. We can take it at any amount, any pace that you want. Mm-hmm. Right. Any pace that you're ready for, we can break it down in any amount of small bits that you need, yeah. which sometimes is just, I can bring Max out while you're holding bubbles, right? But the other day I was here working with Rusty, one of the fosters, right? 
and I had Max, but Max and Bubbles come to day camp all the time. Yeah. So yes, Bubbles has fought both Kane and Max here. Max twice, Kane once. Bubbles has never had an issue at day camp. Yeah. But we are very, I mean, we spend a very limited amount of time with him so we can be on top of him or at least be very aware of what he needs, give him the breaks that he needs. We don't live with him. So yeah. it's, it's a lot easier for us to not make, um, not that they were mistakes, but it's a lot easier for us to not overlook a couple things. We're also, we do it for a living. Yeah. We know what we're looking for. And I think, which is cool too, that once you bring a dog into your facility for an evaluation, you are clear that the owner has to make mm-hmm. time to review all of the things that you guys have learned about that mm-hmm. dog in the day that they came in for evaluation. Mm-hmm. And you're very clear of, I need to work with you in order for you to understand what we did because it's not a magic nope. potion that you're going to give the dog and they're going to be perfect. Nope. Or it helps because it, that's the last fight that we got into was when <laughs> Bubbles stopped going to day camp. As soon exactly. As he started and then stopped. And stopped, stopped for and a few then, weeks yep. and then it happened. He got a little, you know, off the tracks. But And we talked about that because it's so important that you as the owner understands what your mm-hmm. dog, seeing your dog from a different perspective. Mm-hmm. We go and we get dogs and we expect the world from them. We want them to be perfect. When they're not, we want somebody else to fix them. And it's not like that. So we have to look at ourselves many times. We have to change our behaviors with our dogs. We have to give them the leader that they need. They need a good leader. They need to be able to look at you and feel they don't have to protect you. They don't have to do your job as the leader. They're not responsible for you. Exactly. Right. I mean... That's the biggest thing is if I could give one piece of advice or, um, you know, to, to people who bring their dogs home, it's direction first, right? Yes. Then affection. But in the rescue world, especially, especially dogs who um, have uh, some sort of sad history, right? And we can kind of talk about that um, maybe more in depth and, and really focus on that topic. But I get a lot of people who bring a rescue dog into the, their home and their goal is to make up for everything that this dog has not had over whatever the course of their life. Yes. And when we do that, number one, I mean, we keep them in this mindset of uh, you still need to be rescued, right? Rather than you're safe, you're good, yeah, you're totally fine. Like you, you have a home, you have a roof over your head, you have food when you want it, you have veterinary care, you are good now. Right. So we keep our dogs living in the past because we can't let go of their past. Right. On top of in their language and in human language, too. Right. We we who else would we invite into our homes and give them no boundaries? Right. As a new a person who's never been in our house. Right. I I am not. This is probably what my second, third time in your home. I'm not going to just open up your fridge and start eating your food. I'm not going to just kick my shoes up on the couch. I'm not going to go lay in your bed, but we encourage our dogs to do that. Right. And if you encourage me to do that, I would, I would have some idea or something would kind of come up of maybe, maybe this is, maybe I can kind of get away with more in this house or, or in this relationship with Andrea. Right. But with dogs, I mean, it's the same thing. We just don't attribute it and we can't fathom that allowing a dog into our space without an invitation might potentially lead to reactivity or might potentially lead to that dog feeling responsible for our space and claiming an ownership over us. It's so hard to put that same mindset to some, a species we love so much. Right. We want them so close to us because we want them to fix actually our problems. Yeah. We go out to the shelter and we want to adopt a dog because we've been feeling lonely or we had a dog who just passed away and we want to have that other dog that, uh, now the expectation is for the new dog to act the same exact way as the old dog. And yeah. that, I get that all the time. And that's, every dog is different. And it's not your dog's job to fix your emotional problems. That's your therapist's job. <laughs> exactly. Don't put that on your dog. Yeah. Your dog can, your dog doesn't understand stand that stuff, right? Yeah. But that's, I mean, a lot of people do that rather than I'm going to bring you into my home and I am going to, I am responsible for you. Therefore, I give the boundaries. I make the decisions. I tell you what's off on limits, off limits, when food time is, where your bedroom is. But people don't people don't do that. And then most of the time, it's like clockwork. About three months in, 
we get issues after we adopt a dog, especially from a shelter, an adult dog. Puppies, it's normally around nine months, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but it's it's hard because you start it where you give them everything. Yeah. So why would they? Well, that's the expectation they have of you. Yeah. And it's like you, you're expecting them to be perfect. You give them everything. Then the the respect is not there mm-hmm. because you have not set boundaries and you ex- you're confused where did this all come from you know and, and when then you, you want to rehome yeah and it comes back to rehoming people want to give up because they think it's too hard it's yeah. too complicated it's not when you stop looking at your dog and thinking they're the problem and realize it's you that need to change it's you that need to set the boundaries mm-hmm. everything changes and it reflects in life, yeah. everything in life. If if you're not getting the result you want from your job, from your relationships, if you change yourself, yeah, that change will come. Yeah. And I've had owners, you know, I, both of us agree that rehoming is an option that is used more than it needs to be used. Absolutely. Yeah. But there are absolutely situations where I've come across as a trainer where rehoming is um, the best option for the dog. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but that owner, I mean, comes to me and says, I know what I have to do and I am either incapable or unwilling to do it. Right. Fine. As long as you admit that, then don't, I mean, don't lie to me and say, yeah, I'll do it. And then only half do it. And then the dog is living in this limbo world. You're upset with the dog for still having these behaviors rather than I just don't want to do it. Fine. Be honest. Yeah. Uh, You know, that's, that's fine with me, but then it's best for the dog to not live with you anyway. Exactly. But it don't assume that you're going to have somebody come out and fix your dog or I can rehome my dog and I'm the problem or the dog's not going to have those same issues there given the same kind of reaction or information from different humans. Exactly. Exactly. And if people really stopped and and thought about that before even adopting a dog, we need to do a whole episode on what to look for when we adopt a dog or go out and what breeds and all of that. Yes. Yes. A hundred percent. And even, you know, telling people you have to stop and think how much work are you willing to put Mm -hmm. in this relationship? Mm -hmm. You're going to start a new relationship. How much work are you willing to invest in this new relationship to make it work? Way of looking at it. You know, you know, you don't start, you don't, you know, start dating someone and agree to be in a committed relationship with them with thinking that, it's not going to take anything from you Yeah, that you're not going to have to put time and effort and make sacrifices for this person. Same thing for the dog. And people, I do think people know that. I think that as humans, we think of these sacrifices as I'm not going to be able to go out to get drinks after work. I'm going to have to go home and let the dog out mm. but, or I'm going to have to wake up early or potty training or whatever. But those sacrifices are so much deeper than that. There's yeah. their emotional sacrifices there. I have to not cuddle on the couch with my dog when I'm sad because I have to still have my dog believe that I can keep them safe when I'm out on a walk. Yeah. And right now, if I have them make me feel better, I can't. It's the same thing with kids and parents, right? Yeah. You've got a parent who every time they're sad, they expect the kid to make them feel better. The kid's not going to look to the the adult as somebody who can make them feel better. Yeah. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. And once we really stop and think about um, how much our relationships with our dogs reflects real life relationships, even if you compare the two real relationships, building a relationship, those fundamentals of building a relationship are all the same when building a relationship with our dogs. Yeah. It does not change because you're whether you're building a relationship with a human or with a dog, the fundamentals are the same. You need to lay boundaries. You need to have respect. You Absolutely. need to be able to look at yourself when there's a problem so you're not just pointing mm-hmm. the finger. You know, mm-hmm. so I think it's so important for dog owners everywhere to understand this. And once there is an understanding, it's going to reflect so much change because a dog owner right now that may be confused. They may be going through different things with their dogs. Their dogs are reactive, whatever it may be. Once you realize you have options and it's not, it's more rewarding for you than anything. Cause yeah. once you start changing and seeing the change in your dog oh, and you yeah. start to really see the response of, you know, all of the work that you're putting in, it's extremely rewarding for you to see that 
it's yep. one of the most rewarding experiences I have had in oh, yeah. my life. That's why I became a trainer is I had anxiety and depression and I got two dogs from the shelter, from Cobb <laughs> County shelter. And I expected them to fix me. Yeah. And bo- both of them were reactive in their own way. One of them much more than the other. Uh, and he was a mastiff. I mean, he was a black mouth cur mastiff. He was huge. He was like a hundred pounds. But he had human reactivity. He had bitten me and everybody I loved. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, but he, I mean, it, he was the reason I got into this was yeah. because I had to realize, okay, you know, it's he's not capable of fixing me. But I got him because I didn't want to get out of bed. And at least the dogs got me out of bed. It got me on a walk. It got me out in the yeah. world. And then all of a sudden, I couldn't take my dog on a walk because he was going to kill somebody. Yeah. Right? I mean, I couldn't. I couldn't do anything. And then it was this very isolating experience. I mean, there's so much that you go through as an owner of a reactive dog of, I said this yesterday in a session of at the same time, you want to protect your dog from the world while also protecting the world from your dog. And it's this very isolating experience where you're just constantly feeling guilty, but constantly feeling like you're doing so much and you're sacrificing so much, but it's still, you feel guilty about what you're doing. It's, it's, I mean, it's a whirlwind, but it is one of those things that when you learn, you know, I'm not every reactive dog that I work with becomes this happy go lucky, beautiful dog where it can go anywhere, do anything and everything's great. You don't get the dog you want. You get the dog you need. But at the same time, it's you learn skills that through your dog. And that's why I love what I do is that your dogs are teaching you skills to become a a better and more balanced human, to show up better for your partner, for your coworkers, for your friends. And what you said of, you know, it is the same thing of when you're starting a relationship with another human, it's the same rules apply to your dog. But the difference is they're a dog. But just Mm -hmm. as I... I, I make sure to see my fiance as who he is and and know what uh, he enjoys and, and what he doesn't. I have to do the same thing for my dog, know the way that they communicate, just like I know the way that, you know, after a fight, Luke wants to figure it out right then. Mm-hmm. I don't. I want to pitch a big fit. I'm Italian, <laughs> right? But with my dog, I have to know that I have to know them not only as a species of dog, right? But I have to know them as as them. So not my previous dog, not my neighbor's dog, not the dog trainer I see on Instagram, her dog. It's who is my dog and what, what do they like? What did they enjoy? Right. Uh, and, and take myself and my ego a little bit out of the equation. It makes, it makes you a better human. A hundred percent. It really does. When you can look at it from a different perspective and start to thinking like a dog, right? That's what we, that's the first thing you told us in our session you have to think like a dog. Yeah. And it's so much easier like, than thinking okay, like a human. Oh um, my lord. How are we going to do that? <laughs> <laughs> Just take all the extra stuff out and put it in a little box. Yes. <laughs> Open it later when Ex- you're not around your dog. Exactly. That's that's so powerful and I think when people start to realize so start to step back and okay, what are my expectations mm-hmm. right now of my dog? Who who is my dog right now? What what behaviors do they have? What do I need to do to help them? What do I need to do to be a better leader? A whole new yeah. world opens up. Yeah. And the relationship starts to grow yeah. and it starts to prosper. And you're just, it's all history from there yeah. because it's a beautiful thing. You see your dog changing and you're making those changes to mm-hmm. help them. And it's just so powerful. And, and empowering too. Exactly. It's 100%. You get to see that like, oh my God, I get to... I represent safety and information to another species. I was able to take myself out of the equation enough to learn not, not just another language, but the language of another species so much so that my dog looks to me when they're unsure about the world. I mean, how beautiful is that of my dog who does not speak English, (laughs) does not know does not have opposable thumbs. I mean, my dog, who this is not their natural world, I have been able to communicate with them in such a way that they look to me when they don't know what to do in this world. That's yeah. awesome. Not only for your dog, but for you. It's such a cool feeling. It's, it's better than cuddling feeling. with them on the couch. A hundred percent. Yes. Absolutely. And it's just seeing that shift. Like we're seeing that shift right now in, in Rusty, the dog that we mm-hmm. are, that we just rescued. 
um, he's really getting so much more. He's getting confident. He's looking at me, you know, and he's trusting me. Yeah, it's His big coolest. fear was dogs. He's so fearful of dogs. Mm-hmm. And like we talked about, it's not, you helped me see this too. He's, he's not, it's not aggression. It's, it's anxiety of he's dogs. He's so anxious. He's everything anxious. makes him anxious. The it, cra- I mean, everything does. Everything. Yeah. And he has changed so much these, these last few days that we have been together I think it's been two weeks Mm -hmm. you know I he's really changed I mean he's able to turn away from the dogs and he because I'm there he understands like okay you're here you take the lead I don't don't have have to to worry exactly I don't have to worry about these dogs you know they're they're just here they're just in the background Mm -hmm. I can walk away I can go outside I can go potty and not have to worry about these dogs and I'm seeing this shift in him and it's all because I stayed strong. Yeah. I consistently follow through with your advice. We worked on the drills you you helped us learn with the leash and mm-hmm. helping him turn away. Mm-hmm. Um, and those are really paying off. You know, those things start to pay off. And it's so rewarding to you to see this this animal just looking at you yeah. for information and, and trusting you and being able to be more confident because you're giving them right. that confidence. Right. Not because you have food in your hand, exactly. not because you are going to correct them on an e-collar at this crazy high level, not because of anything that you are going to respond with, but because of what you've what you've shown them that you can do for them. Yes. Not because of anything other than you, which is the coolest feeling in the world. I mean, I tell people all the time, you know, we look at giving freedom to our dogs. Like when we get them home, we want to give them freedom, right? Especially for our puppies. We want to like see them frolicking in a field and that's like what we look at as fun for our dogs but we look at freedom giving freedom to our dogs as what a kid looks like adulthood as right yeah so as a kid I thought when I grow up I can eat cake for breakfast right (laughs) I can go wherever I want whenever I want and and nobody can tell me no right I I'll have freedom finally Mm -hmm. right and I if I am being honest I ate cookie dough for breakfast this morning as a 31 year old, (laughs) right? But that adulthood also comes with the fact that my stomach does not feel good the rest of the day (laughs) and I have to pay taxes and I have to make my own dentist appointment. And even though I can do whatever I want to do, most of the, I, I have to go to work. I have to pay my bills. I have to pay my mortgage. I have to do, it's this responsibility that we don't see that we give our dogs when we give them so much freedom. It's the same thing that we don't see uh, the responsibility part of adulthood when we're kids. Exactly. It's the same thing. Yeah. No, a hundred percent. And I think that, you know, as we're talking about expectations in this episode and how to shift that relationship Mm -hmm. and giving dog owners a different perspective and letting them know that, there are so many different things that you can learn to build right. that relationship. Right. Don't get so caught up on the two week fix it all program and that your dog has been through. If it's too and good it didn't to work be out. true, yep. <laughs> it's too good to be true. And it's so much more complex that you have to go deep mm-hmm. and you have to do it every day. Now, one thing that I really um, want to mention too is you have took the weight off of me so much with this. You said, don't think about training as you have to put Mm -hmm. off time. You have to have an hour of your day, 30 minutes, whatever. You have to make that time to train. Training is all the time. Yeah. Which is amazing that that took a weight off. It did because in my head, I'm like, I don't have time to train my dogs. I don't have time to do anything. And I'm like, wait a minute. It's all that I have to. When you go out, when you go down there and take them out to go to the bathroom, you're training. Yeah. Them. I have to make sure that they're giving me eye mm-hmm. contact. I have to make sure that I'm walking into their space if they're yep. coming into mine. That kind of, you're like, okay, it's me. I'm, I'm the train. <laughs> am I, I the drama? A, I, yeah. Am I the drama? Is it me? <laughs> I think I'm the drama. Yeah. That's, yeah. 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 <laughs> That's, you know, because when you're thinking about training, you're like, Wait, I don't have thirty minutes. Right. I right. don't. I I can't just wa- uh, put an hour off my day. I barely have any time. But right. consistently, you're you're helping these your dog make these poor decisions. Mm-hmm. And when you start to realize, like, we just have to shift, and yeah. it's everything is training. From the moment that you get out of bed and you and you and your dog are in the same space, mm-hmm. training starts right there. Yeah. And once you start to f- figure out, it's you know more about you and how you're leading 
the space and Absolutely. the relationship, then you don't have to think about, oh, now I have to make time for training. Oh, it's too exhausting. No, you have a dog, yep. your dog owner. You're already spending time with them. You're already spending time with them. How do you Use that, that time. time. How do you spend that time? It's not, it is, I, I wish I could, I mean, I wish more people understood this of, it is not that you take time away and you teach all of the these skills, which don't get me wrong, spending, uh, uh, dedicating a little bit of time every once in a while to teach a new skill. Absolutely. But I mean, dog training is how you live with your dog day in, day out. What interactions are you having with them? Um, you know, what, how are you spending the time that you are already spending with them? If you yeah. walk into that room and all three dogs are jumping all over you or you're walking with the food bowls up here, right? Like in that video and the dogs are jumping on top of you and they're running all around, you're training. You're just not yeah. training the way that you want to. They're yeah. learning. It's just not what you want them to learn. Yeah. It's the same. It's it's all the same of humans, dogs, all of this. It's just as dog trainers, it's easier to market, spend 20 minutes a day and you get this rather than, no, you really need to look at every interaction. Yeah. I'm really sorry about <laughs> it, but it's every moment. <laughs> but it's that, all of it. That allows you to really step back and see see your relationship with your dog for what it yeah. really is. Every moment counts. Yep. You have to change your behaviors to get a, their behaviors to change. Yep. You don't have That's to, it. I mean, I don't normally recommend you have to, you know, take your dog for this long, three hour long walk every, it's not that it's change what you're already doing because what you're already doing is the reason you're getting the behaviors you're mm -hmm. getting. That's yes. why they've learned what they've learned. So if we shift what we're already doing, that's it. It's it, uh, most of the time. That's it. I mean, Easton, one of my assistant trainers, she had gone to two or three other trainers before me. I did one session with her. I left that session thinking, oh my God, I bombed that because Obi already walked beautifully on a leash. He had some leash reactivity when he blew up when he saw another dog. Um, but I, what we talked about was don't get him on the furniture, get him back in the crate. Every interaction inside, the 90% of the time that you spend with your dog inside the house is 90% of what they're learning. But most trainers focus on the issue rather mm -hmm. than how we interact in everyday life. Yeah. And then we saw a ton of progress and Easton is now one of my trainers, <laughs> not a client, a trainer. So Amazing. it's it's how we live with our dog in every moment, not the behavior that we don't like. It's how did, where did they, where'd that come from? Yes. It's the 90%, not the 10. Exactly. And you wrote a beautiful closing statement. You, you're going to have to read it because it's going to take me forever to, to, <laughs> to pull it up. No, I went, I went, cause you wrote it. You read it. Oh my gosh. Right. You just wrote that so nicely to just bring it all together. Yeah. Cause we've been, you know, talking about rehoming and, and all of this, no matter what dog you get, what age you bring them home, where they come from or where they're back or what their backstory is, you will have issues. It's absolutely inevitable. Don't adopt a dog thinking everything will be smooth sailing, but how you deal with the issues your dog has is what matters. Yes. And that just brought it all together. That right there is you, um, you just not having expectations and accept your dog for who they are. And it's just so rewarding for you and your dog to build that really strong relationship. Yeah. And they're seeing you for the leader that, they need and you're seeing your dog for who they really are there's always going to be issues in every relationship you have with your dog with your friends all of it yeah it's it's how you deal with those issues that make you a better human and a better owner and a better friend a better fiance all of it yes how you deal with them and in the next episode that we do we're going to talk about what to look for in a trainer yeah. that's very important because i know that people from all over they you know they might be in a different state um, and they're looking for a trainer, th this is going to help you to learn what to look for as you're doing the search, uh, what characteristics, what points that you really need to ask them when you're looking and doing that interview to find your trainer. So we're going to discuss that on the next episode. And thank you so much for tuning in thank with us guys. and being part of this. We're, we're really happy to start this together. And we're really hoping that, you know, we can bring a lot of more people together yeah. and build a community. So you, you dog, dog owners can understand you are not alone in this and there is a way to change. Reactive dogs are not broken. They are, there are resources. There are, there's support out there. Yes. Yes. And, and 
we're just very excited to do this together. Yeah. So thank you so much for tuning in. And until next time. Yeah. Yeah. Have a good day. Go walk your dog. <laughs> Make sure to follow us on Instagram at Think Like a Dog Podcast and follow at Mirror Image Canine for training tips. If you have any questions, please reach out to us via email at info at thinklikeadogpodcast.com.